Well, hello everybody and welcome back once again to the Chaz Man Show. I'm Chaz Riddle. This is the Chaz Man Show uh, on YouTube and this is my second episode. Thanks for joining me once again. Um, and I want to thank all the people that have subscribed so far. And uh, please share this video and, and uh, if you like, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started right here. Um, uh, we've got some things to cover. The first thing we're going to do is do an ongoing segment. We'll do, well, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you about some stories that I have seen online that you may have missed. Okay, first thing that uh, comes out, uh, the first story, is about a Brinks truck in New Jersey that, uh, going down the highway, for whatever reason, hit a bump or wasn't secured properly, but the doors opened and bags of cash fell out, clearing the, uh, the highway there. And after several weeks of looking uh, through bushes and so forth, uh, trees all along the road, authorities are still $300,000 in the hole. They're missing $300,000. And of course, they talk to the community, and nobody needs, seems to know anything. No one knows anything about the missing $300,000. If I were the authorities, I would look for people that uh, had just purchased a brand new car a new piece of uh, jewelry or paid off their mortgage, things like that. I mean, that movie, that money doesn't really disappear now, does it? Okay, um, the next story uh, that I thought was interesting was uh, the Yankee Candle Company. Apparently, there has been a, an epidemic of uh, people coming in to the ER with the miniature Yankee Candle stuck firmly in their rectum. And... Um, now, this is not something that Yankee Candle per prescribes or suggests for you to do. Uh, my first thoughts are, you know, how could you light the candle? But anyhow, um, now, uh, it uh, is probably pretty painful to remove. And if you know uh, my background a little bit, I did work as an x-ray tech in the hospitals, and I never encountered the Yankee Candle situation. However, there was a situation where a young man came in, about 16, 17 years old, and he wanted to remain anonymous, sort of, kind of, uh, because he didn't want to rely on his father's insurance. Now, the poor guy, he had uh, got a six-inch dildo stuck in his rectum, and he couldn't get it out. And uh, when we broke the news to him that since we were not going to be using insurance, the cost of the removal was $5,000. And the kid without a beat goes, well, man, I don't have $5,000, but how much would it cost just to change the batteries? Anyhow, those are the stories that uh, I came up with this week. Uh, moving right along to uh, what's in the movie theaters. Okay, the first thing I'll talk to you about is a movie called The Mule by uh, Clint Eastwood, directed and starring Clint Eastwood. It's based on a story of a 90-year-old horticulturist uh, and uh, World War II veteran. He is recruited by the Mexican cartel to transport $3 million worth of cocaine through Michigan. Now that story enough is interesting, but the, really the backstory behind this whole thing is uh, everybody in town loves the, uh, the World War II veteran, the, the veteran uh, Clint Eastwood, they love the mule, everybody except his family. Um, and I think it's going to be a very interesting story. Uh, you know, rounding out the cast, you've got, uh, my goodness, you've got Michael Pena, you've got uh, Diane Weist, you've got uh, Clint's daughter Allison. It's also got uh, uh, Mahershala Ali and uh, Bradley Cooper. Now, Bradley Cooper, of course, he's enjoying uh, the, the, the fruits of his labor there with uh, A Star is Born. And if you haven't seen that movie, I definitely suggest you go see that. Lady Gaga makes her debut performance in that, uh, debut movie, movie performance, and I think she just knocks it out of the park. I'd look for big things for her at the Academy Awards this year. Um, but anyhow, that's back to the mule. It also stars uh, Andy Garcia, and uh, this is about, uh, well, Clint Eastwood is known for sneaking movies into, just under the wire for uh, Academy Award uh, consideration. This is not going to probably do that, not like Million Dollar Baby, uh, but, you know, Clint Eastwood is Clint Eastwood. It's, it's worth the price of admission just to go see him. I mean, my goodness, he's, he's, he's dirty hairy. Um, in Unforgiven, he was the old cowboy, but that was 26, 27 years old, years ago, and he's still going strong. He puts together a great story. Uh, what else is in the movie theaters right now is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, 
starring uh, Shamik Moore as Miles Morales. Now this is an animated story. It's, it it, it uh, tells the tale of uh, the convergence of uh, different dimensions in the Spider-Verse. So while Miles Morales is a young teenager with new powers, he uh, somehow crosses dimensions and he talks with uh, Peter Parker, voiced by Jake Johnson. And Peter Parker is in his mid-40s and Peter Parker kind of gives him an idea of how to use his powers um, the, the, the correct way, the right way, you know, this, through experience he's telling them. Now joining him in on, on this little adventure, you've got Spider-Ham, voiced by John Mulaney. You've also got the voice talents of, uh, let's see, uh, Haley Steinfeld, who is uh, just awesome. She's in a movie called Bumblebee right now, but you may know her best from uh, the uh, uh, True Grit, uh, and where she uh, was up for an Academy Award as a young age, too. But, um, okay, the other movies, I'll say so right now, you've got The Mule, and you've got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And then for family, if you want to go uh, as a family, which is what I really enjoy doing, and I can tell you that uh, I would go see The Grinch. It's uh, voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch. You may know him as Doctor Strange. People from TV know him as Sherlock Holmes. And if you uh, follow the Star Trek movies, the newer ones, he also played uh, Noonien Singh. Uh, Singh uh, Khan. So, um, anyhow, I hope I said that name correctly. Um, but everybody's waiting for the big movie that's going to be hitting on, uh, on December 21st, and that is James Wan's Aquaman starring Jason Momoa and Amber Heard. Now, this is a story that uh, involves uh, a young man coming to age, trying to figure out where he belongs. Uh, is he a hero? And um, there's, of course, the conflict between he and his brother, um, and that plays out really well. Jason Momoa, he's one of the, the better characters in Justice League. Uh, I think uh, it's going to really propel the DC Universe back to where they should be. I mean, the DC Universe has, has Superman and Batman, and they really have gotten the movies that the, we really should, that they deserve anyhow. At least not the Ben Affleck version of, uh, of Batman. But I love Henry Cavill. Uh, and of course I did like Justice League. Some people didn't like it a whole bunch, but I thought it was a great story. Um, you've got uh, Henry Cavill, uh, Superman, you've got Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman who had her uh, home solo movie, which was absolutely awesome, except for the third act. It got a little bit uh, slow with that, but you know, the, the big villain, the big bad wasn't as, as bad as we would have hoped, but still a great, um, a great movie by Patty Jenkins. But anyhow, uh, I digress. Um, December 21st, Aquaman, Jason Momoa, Amber Heard. Uh, rounding out the, uh, the cast is Dolph Lundgren, uh, William Dafoe, and Patrick Wilson. And you'll get to see all the things. And I think they did some really uh, incredible things. I mean, just if you can imagine sharks uh, with battle armor. Uh, <laughs> and at one point, I believe there, I I've, uh, saw a synopsis or a little story part. Uh, where there is going to be an octopus uh, playing the drums. So it's worth it just for the spectacle. Again, that's December 21st. Okay, so those are the movies that I would suggest you go see, but of course still in movie theaters right now is Creed II, starring Michael B. Jordan, which you really can't, uh, you can't ever really go wrong with a Rocky movie, except for Rocky V, but it has its merits. Um, I mean, as far as the Rocky movies goes down, the, the, uh, the, uh, in, in entire franchise there. Rocky V is not the best, but it had its, had its qualities. Um, so uh, Creed II is a continuation of Rocky IV, where Rocky uh, fights um, um, <laughs> Ivan Drago. And you remember that's, uh, that's Dolph Lundgren. Now here it is 20 some odd years later, and the son of Apollo Creed, Adonis Creed, is going to be fighting the son of uh, Dolph Lundgren, you know, so that uh, that is still in the movie theaters, and that's just worth it enough just to see a performance by Sylvester Stallone and Michael B. Jordan, of course. And uh, let's see what else is in the movie. Bumblebee, starring again the aforementioned Haley Steinfeld, worth the price of admission. You'll know her from True Grit. She was one of the youngest people ever to be nominated for an Academy Award. Okay, so that's the movie theaters. Uh, that's in the movie theaters. What I would recommend for you right now. Okay, now moving on to the uh, email questions, and I want to thank everybody for subscribing and the nice comments I got from the uh, emails. Okay, the first email of the day comes from Shadow Dancer one two three. Chaz, enjoyed your first video. Your dog is cute. 
Thank you, Jackson. There's a handful. He's under my feet all the time. Very affectionate. Um, and I'll just say this. Uh, if I had a girlfriend who was half as attentive as Jackson is to me, I would marry her lock, stock, and barrel. Um, anyhow, uh, Shadow Dancer goes on to say, I love movies and TV too. Uh, doesn't name there. She doesn't name. I assume it's it's a female shadow dancer. One, two, three. But I'm not judging. Could be a guy. Um, uh, doesn't mention their their movie uh, favorite movie, but it does say I really enjoyed Shameless. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. I watched all eight seasons on Netflix just recently. Loved every minute of it. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is um, starring William H Macy as the patriarch of the Gallagher family. Six kids. Frank is a drunk and an alcoholic, and a pretty, uh, he's an on-again, off-again dad. The family's really run by Fiona, the, the oldest daughter. And a quick uh, characterization of her, what I would say, she is, uh, she's typically, uh, she's the whore with the heart of gold. And I'm not saying she's a hooker, but she does have several, and I mean several, uh, hookups in this, in, this, uh, in this TV series. But it doesn't go against the fact that she's still, her main goal is to look out for the kids. And uh, she does that, I think, pretty well on most occasions. There is a little trouble she gets into, but I'll let you explore that on your own. Again, I recommend this. Now, the next person in the family, the youngest, or the next, uh, next oldest, uh, just under Fiona, is Lip Philip. He is really, he's a genius. He makes his living as a high school kid. He makes his living by taking tests to get people into college. And his story arc, um, his big problem is he's an alcoholic. But you'll find that out as you go along. He's one of my favorite characters as well. And then moving down the line, you've got Ian. He's the homosexual. He's reluctant to tell people of his homosexuality. But then later on, he develops the following and actually gets a god complex. He's got a great story arc. Um, uh, and uh, the next one down in line, as far as the kids go, is uh, Debbie and Carl. Debbie is the young, is the... Uh, is the next daughter in the, in the line there, the second daughter, and uh, she is a hoot. She's very, very funny. I think you'll really enjoy her story arc. She, um, she goes from a little kid who uh, dresses up a sack of potatoes and walks, uh, the ba and walks it around pretending it's a baby to, uh, well, you'll find out, but um, she does, uh, no spoiler alert, later in the later season she does be become a mother, and uh, I think she's a good one. And, of course, my, uh, my favorite character is, is Carl. Carl goes from just being the most malevolent uh, little bugger that you'll ever meet. I mean, he's, uh, he's melting his action figures in the microwave at, at one point. Uh, another thing, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, knocking people down on the football field um, just to see people cry. Um, but then he has a round of juvie. He ends up in the juvie. And, uh, but then Carl makes a big swing he becomes uh, well i won't break it give it away but he's my favorite he's uh, he's he's a great character and of course there's the baby liam you'll see him starting off in diapers and and he grows up to be a pretty responsible kid actually more responsible than frank as you go as it goes along now the next door neighbors are are kevin and fee and um and uh victoria um and uh i think that you'll you'll love those guys as well they want to get pregnant they get pregnant uh, they get too pregnant at one point, but again, a great story arc. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's on Netflix, eight seasons. I'm looking forward to uh, starting the, the ninth season here very soon. Okay, so yes, uh, Dancer123, I have seen Shameless. I do enjoy it, and I recommend it for the viewers out there. Okay, uh, next email is from Simply Me. Hey, dude, nice to see you. At least uh, nice to uh, meet you uh, uh, via video. Anyhow, stumbled upon your video. Thought your stand-up at the end of the video was very funny. Uh, where can I see you? Well, coincidentally, uh, sim simply me. Today is December 16th, and at 7 p.m. tonight at the Second Chance Saloon, I'll be doing stand-up over there. And I see, and I, if you can make it out there, that'd be great. Um, now tonight is a, it's a, every week at 7 o'clock at, at uh, Second Chance Saloon in Oakland Mills. Uh, there's going to be at least 12 to 15 comics. The show's put on by Stephen Tracy. Now, on the, tonight's venue, we've got myself. Uh, and, of course, there is going to be uh, Frank James, Kim Kasem, Parker Brown, Troy Blackwood, Davion Williams, and there's a few others that are going to be tonight. So come on out. Drinks are, uh, I believe, Miller's are only $2, and you'll have a, and have a great time. I might even be doing some interviews with some of the comics and putting it on a, a future YouTube video. 
But anyhow, guys, that is the stories. We've gone through um, some stories you may have missed. We've gone through what I recommend for you to go see at the movie theater. And uh, also we talked a little bit about a TV and uh, what shows I like. But please, tell me what you like. Keep sending those emails in. Um, like and subscribe this video. Share it with your friends. I want to get as many subscribers as possible. Um, I want to branch out with the number of videos I can do. Uh, I want to get an actual, uh, you know, so just one view of me, you know, some, you know, an additional camera there and there, so we can get. So it's not the same thing over and over and over again. So anyhow, that that costs money. So the more subscribers I get, the more uh, we'll be able to branch out and do that. So please like and subscribe. Now. As a, as a kind of a tribute, um, how I got started doing this stuff, um, I would say that if you want additional videos to watch in the interim when I'm not on, uh, tune in to the John Campia show. Uh, John is really a workhorse. He puts out a video Monday through Friday plus another show where he talks nothing about mo but nothing but movies and television. He's very very um, very very smart, very very knowledgeable, very talented guy. And he also does another show uh, called The Weekly Hero with Robert Meyer Burnett. So there you go. You've got five shows at least from John Campia, plus the sixth one being The Hero, The Weekly Hero. That's something I think you should take a look at. The other uh, uh, video uh, series I'd watch, I'd suggest you watch, is Emergency Awesome with uh, Charlie. Charlie puts out uh, eight to ten minute videos every day about all your favorite TV shows, whether it be Game of Thrones, Westworld, uh, The Flash, Arrow. Um, all the movies that are out there, all the Marvel, all the DC movies, he really goes into, into depth of what um, uh, each thing uh, is. He'll break down everything for you, but again, the guy's a workhorse. He's got two and a half million subscribers. Oh, to be Charlie. But anyhow, those are a couple. And of course, the last one I recommend you do is tune into Collider uh, videos. Um, they do a movie talk show Monday through Thursday. And then they do a movie review show on Friday. Then, of course, they do their, their mailbag shows where they answer just nothing but, e but uh, email questions on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, there's also a big thing called the Schmodown where people are, are, um, are in contests of trivia. It's just enough to fill your day. They have a lot of great talent there. Um, I suggest those. But anyhow, if you like this video, I, I really suggest, I really hope that you do, Hit subscribe, share this video, and if you've got a chance tonight, please come see me at the Second Chance Saloon. Um, it'll be worth your while. And uh, until next time, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.